Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to beautiful Studio G. And today's video is all about comparing the more modern type of power longitudinal feed on milling machines as opposed to the older styles that were used on this particular machine and probably most heavier milling machines have their own power feed that's powered by their primary motor. But the South Bend is quite a bit different than that. I have shown some of that in the past, but let's take a look at how this power feed works and also the power feed on the closing as compared to an infinitely variable power speed that can be mounted on virtually any mill. So here's a little bit better view of the South Bend milling machine. Showing it from top to bottom, it won't quite all fit into one frame. But this particular milling machine was made in 1965 or 1966. I'm not sure exactly which. And uh, it has the optional power feed, which is just like overly complex. So this power feed consists of a three-phase motor and a uh, belt drive into the gearbox back here and then a <laughs> drive shaft which you see right here that goes into a gearbox right here and look at the length of the uh, the mechanism right here and this is the on and off right and left and neutral but we're still not done there's all kinds of mechanism down here and I'm not even sure how some of this works, but there's two levers, and uh, I believe this is really involved with the limit switches, which in some cases here are missing. But look at all of the, the linkage here, and it goes back to this other gearbox. As opposed to using a more modern power feed such as this Vivor, and by the way, be sure and watch my video number 888 where I mount this successfully on the Bridgeport mill. I'll show you a clip of that. This is out of the 1956 or 1955 catalog when this machine was being introduced brand new. Now notice the difference in the base and that there is no power feed of any kind nor was one offered yet as an option. It always helps to have a beautiful woman advertising your product, doesn't it? Which are you looking at? The woman or the machine? Again, take note of the base. Apparently, and I do not know the exact dates, they switched from the one-piece base to the two-piece, which I have, and mine is 1965, so they probably only made this for about five years or so, but it looks to me like it would lack stability. This would be the ideal one to attempt to get down your basement if you had one, but I don't think they made very many South Bend milling machines. This catalog was put out in 1958, and notice that there are some new features here. The power quill and the table feed, and uh, this is the same table feed that I have on mine. Now that was an option, and I'm not sure how much it cost, but it must have been considerable because look at they got a peg leg on there to even support the weight and the motor and the gearbox and all of those other devices that I have shown you. So it must have been complicated and very expensive to make, and apparently they didn't stick with it very long because by the time I ordered a machine, something like this. When I was teaching in 1969, they had a variable speed and I did pay extra and I ordered that for the school shop. And it was one that was made by one of the major suppliers at that time, but it was rather delicate and the kids tore it up two times and I gave up on it. I just remembered the brand name of the power feed that I bought was Servo. So it, that was very expensive. So here's another shot out of the catalog explaining the different parts and what they do as well as the parts up here in the other picture. And I need to study that myself. I love this little tool tray. So handy to collect all your clutter, but 
soon things are vibrating onto the floor. I think you know what I mean. So there's a little three-phase motor down here. Now I'm going to turn on the, the uh, phase converter. So this switch controls the motor. And there's a belt and a pulley here, as I said. And then a gearbox here. And there are 30 feeds available, anywhere from 1 quarter inch to 15 inches per minute. And of course you have to set the tumblers here as you do on a lathe. For many, many years, until this was given to me by Lost Creek Machinery, I always thought that this was just a gearbox that they took off of a lathe, but it is not. It's specifically built, dedicated, for these milling machines because here, in fact, is a lathe gearbox. You can see it's much longer, has many more gears available, so it is not the same. And I'm glad to clarify that for myself, and I think probably some of you wondered the same thing. You know, it's October 10th, 2023, and it's getting chilly out here. Fall is here, and winter is not far behind. But taking off the guard, you can see that it's a narrow V-belt, and there's also a couple gears here, small pulley, large pulley. So it, it's just complicated, isn't it? There you can see it running. And the drive shaft goes into the gearbox underneath the table. Alrighty, let's take a look at how this thing works. First of all, turn on the motor. And I have set it for two inches of feed per minute, which is kind of coarse. But using this lever, that's to the right, off and to the left but you got to walk clear around the machine in order to reset the gearbox it's not handy like the modern ones where everything is right there at your fingertips also this makes the table about or the footprint of the machine about 10 inches longer than uh, any other machine never walk away while the power feed is on I looked in the instruction manual and this is called the table feed trip mechanism and this one is called the table feed release lever. They're really about the same thing. So you have control of turning it on and off right here without moving your hand a full two feet <laughs> to the other lever. So just think how much cheaper these are and they're infinitely variable and all of the controls are right here you got a, a rapid traverse you got the on and off switch the right and the left and then you can dial in the speed all in one simple compact unit which cost about hundred and sixty nine dollars I have no idea what the other feed cost back in the fifties but it must have been considerable so apparently South Bend dropped all of this mechanism like it was red hot when something like this became available. But remember, you older guys, there was no such thing as variable speed drills or any of the things that we enjoy today back in the 50s. But again, here my point is that we could get rid of all that mechanism back there and all of this and just hang one of these on. They wouldn't need all of this. And... Uh, makes life simpler and cheaper and it's infinitely variable instead of what did i say 30 speeds back there all right i hope you enjoyed that but i'm not done stick around with me just a little bit because i'm going to show you the power feed now on the closing milling machine just very briefly i had hoped to start using this closing milling machine it's horizontal a little bit more frequently but that didn't happen this summer but it really is a wonderful machine and remember that was donated to me by Chuck but if you look at the power feed on this it in some ways is similar to the South Bend although it does not have a separate electric motor it's driven off of the main three horse 
a primary mover, I should call it. So down there is a gearbox with, uh, oh, it's got a knob, actually got two knobs, and then it too has a drive shaft. So that's the output of the gearbox, and then the drive shaft goes to a box out here. So it's kind of complicated too. And it in turn drives the table the long way now, longitudinal. There is no cross power feed on either one of these machines that we're talking about today. And by the way, that gearbox has 12 speeds. So when I turn the main motor on, watch the drive shaft, which also has a spline on it, and the other one did too as well, because it has to vary in length, doesn't it? But when I turn it on, you can see the shaft moving into a U-joint uh, right here and into this box. And this lever turns the power feed on and off. See the handle coming around? And the handle can be disconnected here so it doesn't break your arm when it comes around. Now I'm going to push this back in so you can see what's happening here. But this little knob here will change directions. See how it's moving the other way now? So that's your direction. That's your on and off. And this is your stop. You have one on the right and one on the left. They can be moved into different positions so that the power feed will go off. It just did now. And no harm will be done. So it's important to set both of those stops when you're using the power feed. Okay, that completes this little lesson on power feeds. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you are a Patreon member, I have extra con- Just kidding, you know, I wouldn't do that. But there is just a little extra credit as I show you uh, the fact that I had mounted a Viva, you might have watched it already, uh, power feed on the bridge port. So we'll go down into Studio B now. And there's a lot of... Uh, Still pictures at the end, so I hope you watch those and watch one of my uh, 1,500 other videos as well. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now, and you won't see much action out here in Studio G anymore as the weather here in northern Illinois drops. That's simple. Crops are just about in around here, so see you next time. Okay, we're back in the basement where it's nice and warm. And I've mounted a very good Vivor power feed here. And watch video 888 if you want to see that. But look at how convenient these are compared to the mechanical ones that I showed you out in Studio G. Simply turn it on. Move the lever one way or the other. Select your speed. All in one unit. No reaching, no moving. All the way from that up to that. Remember, I've had this machine for over 25 years without a power feed. So this is quite a luxury for me, and I'm thankful to Vivor for sending that to me. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.